Great to see you again. Hey, Jamie. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Yeah. Seems like it turned out just great. Yeah. What's it like as an actor to join an already successful franchise? Is there pressure on you, or do you sort of think, oh, this is going to be good because the last two were yeah. successful, so this one's going to be successful. No, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I was thrilled to join something that already has an audience, looking forward to the next installment. Um, but I, I didn't underestimate the difficulty or anything. I didn't take it for granted. I really wanted to um, join up and, and do, the, do the franchise proud and uh, deliver on Chapter 3. Um, I had great confidence and every reason to because with Lee uh, at the helm directing for the first time, um, I just knew that uh, anything I was confused about would, uh, would be cleared up by him and he had a really steady hand, worked us really in a way that we understood to deliver on the reality of this family mm -hmm. first and foremost, first priority, and then sort of let the horror parts take care of itself. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what happened. It makes that uh, the impact of the terroring, terrorizing parts, uh, you know, that much more effective. Yeah. Now, now you haven't really been in a, a horror film before. No, this a would pure be, horror. This is really this the would first. be my first full fledged. So, the, how did you know that that's sort of the way to do it? I mean, did did Lee talk to you about it? Did, that's did, a did good the way question. to do it is to know. concentrate on the reality and let the other stuff sort of happen. Well, there are other types of movies you do that. Certainly, comedies. You know, you don't want to be f right. seen trying to be funny. So, the more real you are, in theory, the funnier it'll be in those situations. So, it's not a foreign concept, but. Uh, you know, Lee was straightforward about it. I mean, he said, this is your task, you know. Um, and uh, if anything, when, you know, I, I've been an actor a long time. When a director has a strong viewpoint, I just go with it because uh, right or wrong, that's the way he wants, he or she wants it to go. That's their vision. In this case, as often they are, he was right. You know, <laughs> I have had those situations where you put your performance in the director's hand and they're not right. But... Uh, you don't really have a choice to decide that while you're doing it. Um, but obviously, his natural instincts and his experience uh, you know, put me in really sure hands. Yeah, and also knowing that he created this material. That's he understands it. it. Yeah. How valuable is that with a director to know that you know, he's not just the director, but he's the guy running this ship. Yeah, I loved that. And um, you know, I, I really respect those other two movies. Um, and was able to discern the, 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 uh, the differences he added to this one. You know, he notched the, he brought the family down from the middle class a little bit. He put them in an apartment that ends up getting pretty claustrophobic. Um, you know, instead of a, a boy in bed catatonic, you have an older teen girl who's still on her feet, viable, trying to fight this off. Um, you know what I mean? It, it brought the action, it, it increased the action, it increased the suspense, and it, it made it, um, you know, it, more accessible, it made mm -hmm. the characters more accessible so that when they are in trouble, it has that much more of an impact. What's happening to me? One night after you came to see me, I had a vision of you. You were standing in the dark. A man was walking toward you. A man who couldn't breathe. I've been to that dark place too. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you. Uh, I want to begin by asking you, Lee, um, I understand that a great reason you wanted to make this movie a prequel is so we could bring back the lovely Lynn. Yes. Is, was that sort of the catalyst to why this film had to be a prequel? That was the catalyst. I mean, once I decided to make Lynn the, the central character of the film, I knew that I had to go back in time because unfortunately we killed her off in that first movie. <laughs> you know, if, if Patrick Wilson hadn't strangled Lynn's character to death in that first film, we might be telling a different story. But um, I really didn't want to deal with the, you know, ghostly, undead version of Lynn Shay. I, I wanted to to delve into her past as a human being. Who was she as a person? What sort of life did she lead? So that's what started it all. Lynn, how did you feel to know that you were going to have an opportunity to go into the, the past with this character? And also that you have a director here who was willing to change the whole course of the film so that we could have you involved in it. <laughs> really, I mean, first of all, I, I was excited to know Lee was going to direct. And when I read the script, these characters have such a rich emotional life, all of them, and I think that's what's investigated first. 
which again, for audience purposes, opens the audience up in an empathetic way to receive these people and you really, you feel for them and you want to come into their lives. And I think that's why the horror is so much greater in some ways. The mo in, of all the insidiouses, I think it's the scariest it, because it scares you in way you're, ways you're not expecting. There's um, real life uh, experiences, this, this, this theme of loss, which is something everyone has experienced no matter how old you are. Um, and I think people are gonna be unexpected, it's not gonna be expected that they're gonna be feeling so vulnerable um, because thematically, even a 13-year-old has had loss, whether it's a friend or a, doesn't have to be someone dying, but that idea of something you want back in your life, that something is taken away from you, is a powerful, powerful theme. So I think it's the scariest in the fact that Elise is, elicits the beginnings of that in people, and the film really made it an exciting place for an actress to start a role. Now, Lee, if there is a fourth Insidious film, would that be a sequel to chapter three? <laughs> Another prequel to the original? Will we continue in this timeline or go into a whole new timeline? I don't know. I mean, I haven't really thought about it yet, but, but for the purposes of this uh, interview, I'm going to say I'd like to explore the time between this film and the first film. There's that whole area there where Elise has rediscovered her gift and, you know, I think she could have a lot of adventures before she arrives. Oh, you can make four or five movie. movies just exactly. about that time exactly. period, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I might be eating green jello by that time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think there is a lot of room there. You know, we've kind of established Lynn in this particular film as kind of this, this superhero, you know, so it, that, that would be kind of interesting to have her spearhead the other films. Yeah, that'd be great. Kills you. No! 